And if you give me a, a test count there, Dad, just say hello. I just want to make sure that we got your voice recorded. Hello. Ah, uh, we got gotcha. you. Okay, so what we'll do is we're just going to go through. These are slides that you took. You took these pictures. I did. Oh, yeah. And you're going to just tell me what you can remember about them. And I'm going to get a, a pen here. Just gonna make sure I write down the picture numbers. Picture with the pontoon in there. Well, that looks like must have been underneath the plane. Yeah, it was a Grumman Goose for sure, and it looks like it's painted up in Alaska coastal colors. And uh, and it looks like it might be what close to Lizienski. Could be anywhere up there, I suppose. There's another picture there too, same thing. We probably took the picture because it was fog down below and he was flying between yeah, the mountains. Yeah, that's a good picture. Yeah, you're, you, <laughs> you'll have a lot of good pictures in here, Dad. Yeah. Oh boy, I, um, I think that's between Petersburg and Juneau, some place. And this one's out of place, so we'll skip past that for right now. What boat is that one? I think it's the Coolidge. And I'll zoom in on it here. Yeah, I, th I think it's the Coolidge. It looks like somebody's following you here. It looks like you're on the scenic when you took this picture. Yeah. <clears throat> it was the white light. Yeah. Who had the white light? Oh, some guy named Olson. You remember him? Yeah. White, white light. White light Oli. White light only, and he had a, had a wife with long hair. Oh, there he is, too. White light only, uh, that's yeah. right. That's a good one there, huh? Yeah. The <laughs> scenic rolled a bit, too, huh? It looks like I'm towing somebody, maybe. Looks like it's the white light again. <laughs> sure, sure got them both rolling. There's the bow of the scenic, right? Yeah. So you had, um, I noticed that there's two anchor rollers up in the front. Yeah. What was that used for? Huh? When did you use two, or you well, would just alternate? Well, I had a spare anchor uh, just in case. Well, we always had a spare on the Agile, but it was down on the deck. So it was common to have two anchor rollers? I don't recall. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's uh, Andrew Yerda. Would this be out in Petersburg then? Uh, just at the entrance to Petersburg? Yep, that's right. I recognize that yeah. now. Andrew Yerda, okay. His grandpa. Yeah. Did he fish with you much on the uh, scenic? N no. No, it was very sad. Um, he had his own little boat there. What can you tell me about the scenic since we're looking at a good shot of the deck there? So it looks like uh, you were actively fishing halibut even in, at this time. Yeah, that's why that railing is so high around there. <clears throat> and um, so you would fish halibut for a particular period of time and then troll the rest, or would you troll mostly when the troll? Yeah, we had a, a quota to catch. Uh, it took about a month or a month and a half, and uh, then we went trolling. And then I see you've got, uh, 
Oh, that's what you meant by the railing being so high. So that aluminum railing was um, removable, or did you leave it on? Oh, yeah, that was removable. But it looks like you're trolling with the railing on anyway here. No, I'm not. Am I trolling? Well, oh, see, yeah. the, the wire's going through the pulleys. Where are the lids then? I think they're in the water. Oh, yeah, I see. And Grandpa, yeah, Grandpa's sure. in the cockpit. Yeah. And it looks like you're... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you're on the... Oh, yeah, I can even see a, a float bag um, uh, off to the left there. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're actively trolling with the railing up, so you must have been uh, just switching in between halibut and uh, trolling at that time. That would be my guess. Mm. Uh, I didn't like to have the, the railings up uh, because it's awkward, you know. They... Sure. Get fish aboard. Yeah. And then the um, the hay rack is, uh, it looks like it's just a single set of pipes. You know, uh, you didn't have like, a, it wasn't yeah, deep yeah. like on the Agile. That's interesting. And then back then you were set up for six. It was the agile was set up with eight spool gurries, four spools each side because of the Canadians, I suppose, the influence the Canadians had. So back then it was common to just have the six. Yeah. Oh, well, it had eight, huh? But on the agile, yeah, you had four spools each side, oh. and um, and some of the Canadians that would fish up there, they would have five spools on each side and and run all those extra you know float bags um, and then you got a couple of nice good aluminum spoon buckets when you can still get those I see that was a shame that they stopped making those things and yeah. then this would, picture would have been taken I wonder about what year um, oh I, I, I don't know in, in the 50s I would think yeah, I suppose so and, um, and so you had a depth sounder. I mean, because you still got a box back there, so there must have been a depth sounder inside. Oh yeah. So. There's, there's your dad with a couple of nice salmon. Yeah. There's a good picture of him there. Yeah, you were a good photographer. You caught it right. I like that picture. Yeah. You had a nice day for a picture too. Yeah, got it right in the center, too. Yeah, no, you did it. And um, what else can we see? I don't think I see anything. That's yeah, just those coal strand steel, those steel trolling blocks, the squeaky kind. That's the only thing that looks different from these days. That's a good one. Yeah, that looks like you're. Um, That's a. You got the glacier and the. Heading for Pelican? CDC coming over the bow and. Icy Point is up, up there. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's nice. A nice go home picture. And that's a good picture. So this is still from the wheelhouse of the scenic, and then you're looking out the left window on that one, it looks like. Yeah, beautiful scenery up there. Always changing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as long as it wasn't <coughs> raining and Misty, so you couldn't see anything. Do you remember your first time heading out into that open water towards the Fairweather grounds? Would that would have been with the scenic, or did you ship out with somebody before you? The Neptune, you never went out to the Fairweather mm -hmm. grounds with. You fished the beach on the Neptune. Oh yeah. So the scenic would have been the first time that you went out to the. Uh, oh Fairweather? yeah, yeah. Man, oh man. That's mama, mama fishing. Oh, really? Yeah. She's, she's landing a cool... <laughs> landing a cool... 
So she actually got out there and fished. Yeah, it didn't last long, though. <laughs> It takes her all the way back to Juneau. So it didn't last long, meaning you went out there for part of a trip? Or did you get one season out of her? Huh? You just got part of a trip with her? or, or Oh, how, yeah. That's, that's it, huh? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, boy. So you got plugs hanging out there. I, I, I'm not sure if that is her or not, but that's a woman, though. You can tell uh, by the way she's handling the, <laughs> the gaff hook. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, this one's got a nice, uh, flat, calm ocean. Boy, it's really, really that, calm. That is beautiful. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. And that must have been from the outer grounds because the mountains uh, look far away. It has to be. It, I, I don't know. That, um, it might be looking a different angle, too. Um, that, that doesn't look like the shoreline <coughs> from the from nope. out in the Gulf. Maybe you're fishing Chatham Straits or something? No. Hmm. The boats are kind of scattered out. But the mountains are a lot higher, you know, out, out, out there. I don't know. I don't know. Now we're back to that picture we're not sure about where that was. And, uh, What's the name of that boat? That is the R and H. Oh yeah. That was a pretty boat. And uh, Five Finger Lighthouse maybe? Well, you would know better than me. It looks right. So the R and H was a halibut boat, huh? And, yeah, it was 48 feet long, and uh, Walter, Walter Hofstad in it. Oh, no kidding. That... R and, and H. Uh, Ruth and... Was the R for Ruth? Yeah, it's his two daughters. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the H. Maybe it was R and H before you bought it. And you went, oh, it could have been. You know. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Very possible. And this is the Opal L. Oh yeah. Did you know that guy? I remember the Opal L. Um, he was a character that fellow. Eh? Um, we were tied up close together as a fisherman's wharf there in. He, he was a real character. He he ran it, he ran it on the beach um, down at Westport, north of, north of on the north, north side. Mm -hmm. uh, he he didn't do it uh, as Dick Dick Hand did, but uh, he should have been watching. And they were, it was foggy, I guess, and. Uh, 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 anyway, he was that way. He was probably sleeping. But when when he was that close to shore, he should have been. And and when it's that, you know, when you couldn't see nothing, he, he shouldn't have uh, turned it over to. Uh, he got woke up when they were in their breakers, and then the next thing they were up on the beach. Oh, oh. And and. Uh, he came up here for something, and then I, 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 Mama and me drove him back. And they had to take it over land and, and put in the water on the inside there at Willapa Bay. Willapa Bay. Willapa Bay, okay. You have pictures of that. That'll be coming up. I, be, I don't know if they you, have or not. You do. They're, they're oh. on this. I've oh. seen them. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, 
Well, there's the scenic. You know, that's up at Grandy's. Hauled out at Grandy's, okay. Yeah. Where was Grandy's? Oh, that, that's by the University Bridge. Okay. I worked there. What did you do there? Well, I, I was a carpenter's helper. They like to hire helpers because they, they're cheaper than uh, carpenters. <laughs> but we had, to, we had to do carpenter work. Yeah. They, they, they were building, they built a lot of uh, grandy, grandy designed boats um, for uh, seining. Hmm. All the same size, uh, you know, uh, just mass produced them. Okay. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as we got one dumped in the water, then, okay, guys, come here. And then we had to, there was another one all set up to get a keel and, and stuff, you know, and we had to, I got a bunch of guys and we lifted the whole business over on the, in the marine ways and, and then it was finished up there and it's just, <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> there are two brothers there. One was Fred, and uh, I forget the other one was. But that man, it sure was a pushy outfit. They wanted to get all the work they could out of us. <laughs> no, no monkeying around or smoking cigarettes and bullshit at all. It was just <laughs> full speed ahead. Do you recall any particular names of boats that? you know, you would have worked on? Well, uh, some came up uh, just to get copper painted and and minor repairs and uh, it was mostly new construction. Mm -hmm. Kind of an um, assembly line thing. Do you know that, I mean, like, I, I wouldn't know what the Grandy design was. You know, can you think of one saner that uh, the name of one, just so I could identify it in a picture, maybe um, what the Grandy ones looked like. Well, there was a guy in Petersburg that got one. Yeah, they were about forty, forty feet long. Oh, so they weren't, this wasn't, this is before the Limit Saner days. Huh? This is before the 58-foot Limit Saner. This was way before that then. So there were smaller Saners. Perhaps. Well, uh, what was the Limit Saner? 58. 58. Yeah. So probably the Symphony uh, well, was probably they, 58. They, 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 they. I was just curious because I, I don't know the grandy design necessarily. Where was the scenic built? Up in Petersburg, right? Yeah, oh, Christ. <laughs> that was two years, I think, making the Jesus. scenic, wasn't it? Wasn't it two years? We started in in a in a shed down by the graveyard, then, and, and uh, just got the just got the hull squared away so it. And nothing but boosting and bullshit, you know. And got the hull uh, so it, you know, caulked and painted and and uh, on an extreme high tide, <clears throat> and, uh, about two th two o'clock in the morning, the Gordon g gave it a jerk with his boat there, and uh, it slid. It slid into the water, and then I had to put it in a guy's shed for the summer. And and then in the fall, I got it over to Curly McDonald's shipyard, and they got a, got a house on it, and got it. I had a hell of a time with the goddamn drunks up there. Jesus. What a pile of crappy people in that town. But you you still, um, you chose to have the scenic built there because somebody else maybe had had one built 
at the same well, place. everyone was bragging about that goddamn um, uh, Arnis. Uh, yeah, uh, man. That was a hell of a mistake. Anyway. So uh, about Curly McDonald uh, had the shipyard, and he there was no drinking there. I, I got the house built there, and and the deck on and stuff. Uh, that was a terrible uh, experience. <laughs> well, then we won't dwell on the terrible experience. But the boat came out nice. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah nice looking boat. And this was um, designed by the same guy that designed the Agile. Yeah. Did, was it custom designed for you by, uh, uh, it was Olaf Nielsen, right? Yeah. Was it custom Yeah, designed? it was custom designed. Okay. So you sat with him then and said, I want to get a troller, and, and uh, he already had built boats similar to that. I suppose. So you had something to start well, with. Well, Sagstead's, uh, he was the foreman at, at Sagstead's shipyard, and, and uh, he designed some of those boats that they built there. Hmm. And had you seen one of them and liked it and wanted to get something similar? Uh, but uh, he, he designed the scenic uh, I don't recall. Did you have uh, parameters? I know that it became a halibut boat and a troller. So yeah. you probably told him you needed to do both. Huh? You told him that you needed to do both halibut and trolling and... Oh, yeah. Um, it's a beautiful stern on the scenic, you know, similar to the Agile. Yeah. But I think you told me it behaved differently on quartering seas. You didn't like quartering following seas on the scenic. Um, it's I seem to remember you saying that because oh, the yeah. Agile did better. It, it is. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we, uh, I wanted it to carry a, a load. And uh, so we, uh, we got things a little different there. But, uh, um, it was a dangerous boat going man quartering him before it. Hmm. More and more it went over and more it, the waves pushed it to <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because the stern you know, looking at this picture of the boat hauled out, the stern looks very similar to the Agile. Yeah. So obviously there was something different um, in proportions. Got it fuller down, but down underneath. The... Oh, oh, so it's more, <clears throat> more buoyant, more displacement down there. Wow. Yeah. Good looking boat though. But it didn't live long after you sold it. No, I, a guy. Uh, from Sildobia, I got it, and uh, he was fishing, uh, fishing king crab with with that small boat in the uh, in February, and that, that um, Cook in Inlet goes up to Anchorage, you know, 130 miles or so, and then down to the entrance here, that 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 current. <coughs> gets going and then further further along it goes it, uh, it's inertia you know it doesn't 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 have a tendency to want to stop mm. and so it, uh, by, by the time we got up by I got to Anchorage and then uh, it piled up and, uh, and it got real high tides at Anchorage as a result and by the time uh, <coughs> it was going to go out, 
up at Anchorage is already coming in again down here. <laughs> wow. A very, um, a very dangerous area uh, down, down around Soldovia there. Doesn't take much of a wind to uh, make it very dangerous. So, um, anyway, they, they, there's a, a group of, uh, they call them islands, uh, but, uh, but they're just bare rocks. No, no, uh, no trees. Uh, kind of, oh, I suppose about 30 miles from Soldovi out in the middle out there. And, uh, he was fishing king crab with it, with big pots. And they, they couldn't have them uh, on board, you know, and uh, they'd hoist them up and then take the crab out and then rebate and the, set, set them down and go to the next one. And uh, <clears throat> he was out there in February and uh, the weather turned just like that so, uh, up there, you know, and, and Christ. They had a hell of a time with the, there's uh, some, uh, I think they call it the Hazy Islands, it's just a rock pile. But there's uh, a chance to get in, in uh, to get in uh, there and, and get shelter. And uh, he managed to get in there, but he, the boat was full of water and he, he just got up on the, on the beach there and, uh, and uh, there they were in February, and they apparently, apparently uh, hadn't gotten a May Day out, and uh, and there they were for about three days, and uh, and they uh, had to set the boat afire. There was an airplane flying me from Kodiak to Anchorage, and it was a clear day, and. Uh, they set the boat afire and uh, they saw it from the airplane and and the airplane reported it and uh, they got to, <coughs> got rescued. Wow. Uh, it's amazing. So you had probably just sold the boat that fall? I mean, uh, no, he he got a couple of years out oh, of yeah, that okay. thing. Okay. Something like that. Oh, man. But uh, that small boat, 41 feet, you know, he had no business uh, in the winter time to be out there. And a king crab pot is heavy and mm. big, you know. And then monkeying around like that with a small boat, you know. But anyway, uh, I had it 14 years, I think. So that, yeah. That and he had it about maybe two hmm. beautiful boat I see the thing I remember that I got twenty thousand dollars for it. and that's at Grandy's there I was I was working at I was working at Grandy's as a helper and they were mass producing their their certain model of boats there and and uh, they no sooner they they had about two or two or three going, and uh, by the time that one was ready to be launched, then uh, and the other one slipped into that spot. <laughs> I just <laughs> we 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 carried those goddamn. Yeah, there was about ten people working there. And we carry, we carry, carry the the oh the the keel, the keel and the, 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 that kind of stuff. Into <coughs> as soon as the <coughs> one was gone, and we carried this other stuff that was already made up there, you know, and got that into that position where. It was going to be finished off, so. <laughs> uh, and Bill Grandy hollering at us, get the lead out, God damn it. <laughs> uh, it was a circus. 
But anyway, uh, they treated me nice. Did you work there one season or a couple? And I was just in the winter time for a couple of months or so, I guess. For w just one winter time, you yeah. didn't come back year after no, year. No, right. I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, when I got hauled out that time, <coughs> here he come hollering at me, "Get to work, you goddamn it!" <laughs> Even when Working you were a customer. Boat, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's just the way he was, you know. He was a good guy. <laughs> yeah. You see, I, yeah, I know. He, he must. Was he still in operation? Uh, I mean, uh, when you had the Agile, was Grandy still in f operation? Oh, I, I imagine so. Because I, I have no recollection of. I remember. From my experience, getting hauled out with you was a uh, lock haven for many years. Huh? We, you know, when I was with oh, you, oh, we got we hauled out of lock haven. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Then, and then um, also, then you switched over to uh, Anchor Jensen's there in later years. Yeah. And that was that I remember, of course, very well. Boy, when I was getting hauled out. I guess it was the scenic. I don't know. I was getting hauled out at Grandy's down there at um, lock haven. haven. Jesus, man, I got hauled out, and, and uh, then everything was so run down and crappy there, and and I I, I had the side door open, uh, getting ready to go uh, to go down to start scrubbing the bottom, and shit, I happened to be looking up ahead, and I, all of a sudden the uh, the winch went straight up like that. I, I couldn't see the guy behind the, I was operating. And right away, the boat was heading down. And the winch was going, <laughs> coming down and bouncing up and coming down, bouncing up and tearing up the whole <laughs> goddamn track works there in the, and uh, God, I so, thought, I started the engine, and uh, as soon as we got down to the water, I I put her full speed ahead to stop. I didn't want to get out there where the locks were. And <laughs> gee, gee. So I got her stopped, and it wasn't the float yet. And, uh, and then they had to repair that... Uh, that whole railway set up there in cradle and <laughs> but they they got me in the in the water so I got the hell out of there uh, do you remember that lock haven boat works absolutely because I know this because that wasn't the scenic that was the agile that you were on when that happened that was oh, the agile oh that's the agile and, and um yeah it was good thinking that you had that thing uh, you you had the presence of mind as you're going down the railway to start the engine and put it in gear and uh, yeah otherwise you would have hit you yeah. know, the the locks and um because it's for anybody who's listening to this later on you know it, the marine railway is like a railroad track and it's just it's going uphill and the only thing that's keeping you when they're winching you on you're in a you're in a cradle that's on you know, like like railroad wheels. Yeah. And when that thing is winching you up, there's no um, safety mechanism like they have in elevators or anything. Yeah. There's no cogs or anything. It's just a cable, and and the anchor that the you know the 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 winch should be anchored down sufficiently, you know, to hold all that tremendous weight of the boat that's coming up. Yeah. And obviously, that was old and rotten or something. Yeah, that was rotten timbers. See. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I, I wish I had seen that, but I did get to go down there afterwards. Jesus, um, yeah, <laughs> what, what an experience! And huh? I'll, I'll bet, I'll bet that story still is told. You know, at that if that marine way still exists, I don't know. It's probably condominiums now, but yeah, I'll bet that story was told for years. You know, about that boat that you know happened to be in the cradle when the when the winch came loose. Christ, yeah, I got to stop before it floated. Wow. And uh, then they had a hell of a time to uh, 
get it out into the water so I could get the hell out of there. Oh, because it was off the tracks, I would suppose. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 uh, I got everything stopped uh, by running at a head full, <laughs> full speed before it floated. So I don't recall how we... Uh, Holy smokes. I don't recall how we um, got it the rest of the way out so it, I can get it the hell out of there. <laughs> Jesus, what a... Run down. That's unbelievable. Uh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no, hey, good story, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and here you are getting. Yeah, this is in the marine ways. This is another one of those pictures. So you're being lowered back to the water on the tracks. Yeah. At Grandy's. And it looks like on the south side. So Grandy's was uh, on the north side of the canal there. Uh, 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 yeah. And you said by the University Bridge. Yeah. Well, that's that's where uh, That's where Jensen's is. This wasn't in Ballard? This is No, it wasn't huh. by the University Bridge. Huh. Okay. This is. I'll, I'll have to check my history books then. Get some pictures of Grandies. Oh, another sequence. Boy, the boat was pretty. Well, we built that thing in Petersburg. I don't know what things. So, so hell of a time. So this you know, is just a scenery picture running around Alaska. So is that uh, Three Hill Island? <laughs> I see that, three that hills. looks like Three Hill Island. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's yeah. going from my memory. That's what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, that's Three Hill Island. And, um, yeah. So you must have just, you know, it was a pretty day and you just took a picture out the window and. Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to remember where Three Hill Island is, Dad. Well, you remember Elpen Cove? Oh, yeah. Well, there it is. Okay, that's, oh, wow. Between that and, and Lysiansky Inlet. So this was. Probably running out of Juno or something, you know, because we had that picture earlier with uh, what looked like mom in the cockpit. This might have been running out to go fishing, you know, maybe you had left Juno and you're working your way out. You wouldn't have gone to. No, I suppose if you're coming from Petersburg and going all the way around out to the moving to fish the Fairweather grounds. <coughs> when, uh, when you had the scenic, there's a question. When you had the scenic and you were fishing, were you unloading in, in Pelican? Or would you run it into Petersburg since oh, you... Oh, I, I only went to Petersburg when I, when I was fishing halibut. And, and then I'd, I'd, I'd fish out by Cape Fanshawe in the fall. Hmm. There's a little... Uh, Little spot uh, outside of uh, so just south of Cape Pancha, little uh, upheaval thing. And the, in Petersburg, they call that the middle ground. And uh, very small. And uh, by using the Loran, I could uh, just one little. S but when you went over that, you you get some if if you did it right. Uh, you can go on all day long for nothing, and then just as it was getting dark, suddenly I might pick up about ten. Yeah. And, and then I had to run an hour to, from there to to get in to where I anchored. By the time I got in there, I had the fish cleaned anyway. Hmm. Uh, I had that down pretty pat there, uh, but uh, I seldom used it because uh, <coughs> I had the, the tuna bug, and uh, most of the time I, I was down there. Yeah. And then the summer, I was always out in the fair weather country. Oh yeah, is that that's uh, going up Lysiansky Inlet, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's heading to Pelican, isn't it? So this huh? is, since this is the next picture, 
Yeah, this you know, I'm I'm guessing this is heading to Pelican because right behind us there you can see the open water. Yeah. Um. So it's probably the the same same trip as that last one where we saw Three Hill Island. So you've come around the corner and now you're heading into Pelican. Well, I'm up there quite a ways. Uh, must be five miles from here here to uh, to Pelican. No, to the Icy Streets and uh, uh, Cross Sound. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and you see the Fairweather Mountain Range starting there. Yeah. That's a nice picture. Yeah, your, that was a good picture. And I see your legs in the lead holders, and I see uh, a plug hanging there, I think. And uh, looks like you've got some canvas and stuff over the uh, spoon bucket so nobody can spy on you. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> and uh, the girdies look like the same. They look like Colstrand girdies. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this um, I was surprised to see. This looks, uh, you know, you had the boat painted. This is the scenic. You had it painted very much like the Agile. It yeah. Looks like. Same colors? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and it looks like the uh, bow poles were configured by, um, the bow pole would lay right on the railing. Uh, looking at this picture here, it looks like that's what happened. Yeah, I like to have it up a little bit off the off the railing so it wouldn't be messing up the yeah. iron bark. And we would say that this is out in the outer grounds, right? Because I see yeah. faint mountains in the background there. Yeah. And it looks like you got desk deck scrub brushes there up against the house, so yeah, uh, you had a railing. You must have had a, a railing to hold on to there. Oh yeah. Okay. We didn't have that on the agile because you had more room and a higher rail probably. There wouldn't there have been a, um, a side roller? You know, when you fished halibut, did you have a side roller that dropped into place? It was the same one that you had on the agile. I think was the one that you had on the scenic. Uh, Is that right? I, I don't know. I just don't see the slots um, <coughs> for it, but you must have had slots. I didn't fish any hell, but with the uh, heads I did. Huh? Oh yeah, you did. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we fished a lot of hell of it. And pelican, there's the church. Oh no, kidding! And here's John Clausen's. Wow, well, things really grew up after that. There's the church. Huh. I think that's John Clausen's house. And the postmaster house then, too, must be that other one. Bill, Bill O'Dell, uh, what was his name? Huh? Oh, who was that postmaster? Was it Bill O'Dell? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if he lived in that to begin with. But, uh, you know, the one between the church and Clausen. I didn't even know uh, there was a church I don't know there. Who had this set up? Oh, the one next to Clausen? Yeah. Sure, wow. Rocky Beach along there. Clausen liked to have his boat. Right in front. This is before he put in his own dock and everything. Yeah. It grew up so much after this. This looks like it had been freshly <laughs> logged. So we'll estimate that that picture was probably mid fifties, somewhere between nineteen fifty five and nineteen fifty eight. Yeah, maybe. Um, so now we're back in Seattle. This is outside of Grandy's. We got some yacht, a couple of yachts there. Yeah. And that sign. I'm, and this big oil tank, you know, where is it? Oh, that's, um, yeah, that's, um, uh, um, uh, let's 
Um, I think the Aurora Bridge is here. Okay, on the left. They're they're obviously not there anymore. That so much has changed. No problem. It's a nice picture of a boat though. And the Sea Breaker. The Saner Sea Breaker. Yeah. Man, yeah, that that looks like a fifty eight foot boat. So yeah, at least that man. It looks like it must be sixty something. Nah, I think it's I think it's a limit saner. It's it's. Well, I think that was bigger than that. Oh, uh, from before the limit the saners limit. were up in Alaska. <coughs> they seen down here with bigger. With the well, and they had drums and stuff down here, but. Yeah, I, I'll have to. I think that one pitched that. Uh, yeah, down, that looks bigger. Here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they they seen it along a, a lot in <coughs> San Juan Islands here. Mm -hmm. And there was a pretty good fishery here for a long time. Yeah. And the sportsmen uh, put an end to all that shit. Well, wasn't weren't a lot of the fish Fraser River bound as well? I mean, wasn't that part of the issue? Yeah, that might be. Could, could well be. Now, that, that was in the Coral Sea. This is on the Coral Sea, okay. Yeah, that was the captain there. Forget his name. And the Coral Sea, that's from the Ketchikan Merchants? Is yeah. That, yeah. And this is what you did, part-time job in the winter times for uh, a, yeah. couple, a couple of years? Oh, more than that. Wow. Yeah. And uh, he, he was the engineer. And he, there was two brothers. And... <coughs> and uh, uh, I don't recall how they swapped that around. But anyway, I, I was assistant engineer. Hmm. Because you had been engineer during the war. Yeah. You had familiarity with it. What kind of engines? Oh. I don't recall. Twin or, or just one? I, I don't remember. Yeah, just curious. And then I don't, all the pictures we're going to see of this boat are taken on board the boat. So this is a setup, you know, it's a power scow. Huh? So this boat, the Coral Sea, is it a house behind, power scow, big deck forward with a winch for loading stuff? Or what was the, how was the boat? Uh, big deck, uh, the hold is up forward. Okay. <coughs> And it looks like the house went uh, full width in the Almost. stern there. Almost. I, I, I don't remember. Well, in this picture here, it looks like that uh, left side, or be the right side of the boat, goes right down to the railing. You, it looks like you had to walk through the door yeah. to get anywhere. That's what it looks like, yeah. Oh, now we're back to, I think, towing the white light or something. Yeah. We'll put that back in its spot later. Oh, about to lose the white light in the wave. And that, uh, that was the cook, cook on the Iceland, I think. So there were two boats that you would alternate between? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it looks like a nice galley. Uh, it must, must have been the Coral Sea. Coral Sea was a nice boat. And all the provisions that I can see there, the Crisco and some looks like yeah. some coffee. Looks like any any good kitchen. Nice uh, uh, glasses are held up here, and yeah, yeah. Arm and Hammer baking soda looks the same, and baking powder. So, yeah, a good kitchen. How many guys on board the boat? 
There is four. Uh, I was assistant engineer and I was on watch with the captain. And uh, the captain loved to cook. So in the afternoons, I'd be on watch up there and he'd be, he fixed up a real super meal for him. For an evening meal, and uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just had to go down the engine room for a glance, you know, to check around for, and then it come up again. And I didn't mind. <clears throat> he sure cooked good. But the the chief engineer would like to sleep. Hmm. God Almighty, he's just sleeping all the time. God. <laughs> <laughs> and smoke cigarettes. And so these three guys here at the table, is the captain one of them? Well, in this case here, um, he's the captain. Uh, I don't remember. I, I don't remember what boat it was. That's, oh, okay, uh, this might be a different. It uh, sure wasn't the Coral Sea. Okay. They had a, they had a sardine singer from uh, that the type that worked down around San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They had one of them chartered. That's, yeah, that was one on, on that one. But <clears throat> I was on that goddamn. Uh, oh yeah, that's that was the captain uh, <laughs> on this one here. That oh, on the right first, side. Yeah. His name was Elling. Elling was his first name. <laughs> they were both looking out the window, and, and I got all squared away with my camera, and then I hollered, Hey, Elling! And then he, <laughs> they both looked <laughs> startled as hell. <laughs> Great picture. <laughs> oh, Christ. I was just a passenger that time. I, I got to uh, to ride up, I uh, went up to visit my parents. Oh, wow. And uh, that was on the way up, I think. You know. yeah. Well, because back then, when you had you had have the scenic, you lived on the boat in Seattle? Yeah. And, uh, okay. And you wouldn't take an apartment, you would just live on the boat? Well, a uh, hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I totally understand that. Yeah. I didn't have any money anyhow. Yeah. That's fantastic. And you liked living in Seattle back then when you were a young man because it was well, more because of the dancing there. Oh, wow, yeah, God, in Petersburg, all they want to do is be drunk. Mm. Christ, they try to sober up on the, on the Wednesday and the Wednesday night they're pretty pretty good, and then they start all over again. Just drunk, drunk, drunk. Just I had to get the hell out of there. That, Came down here, was, uh, go to the dances, had a whale of a time. The girls are happy to dance with me, and there's no booze at all. Uh, Jesus, and I lived on the boat, it didn't cost me anything. <laughs> you have to pay mortgage anyway. Huh? You have to pay mortgage anyway. And and you, uh, that was at the Fisherman's Terminal then. The, yeah. What pier? Do you remember? Well, uh, I was always uh, over to the left, you know, seven, and, mm -hmm. and then I, I got over, I graduated to 10. <laughs> and did they always have shower facility there at the terminal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that was the cook on the on the coral sea. He 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 liked to cook. I mean, uh, the cap, captain. The oh, captain. that was the captain. Okay. Uh, the he coral liked sea. to cook. Uh, he's got a drumstick there. <laughs> uh, it was a kick to me. I was on watch with him. I, you know, and God, he he trusted me entirely. He he'd go uh, back in the ga in the galley and. Spend the afternoon fixing up the evening meal. 
You didn't have to worry about that was sure. Yeah. You know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but man, he was a wild one. <laughs> he was a well, wild when one. When we got to port he <laughs> had his clutches and <laughs> God God almighty. <laughs> there was never a dull moment with that guy. I suppose he's made, you're making the same stops each time, right? And you you know when. You're yeah, we uh, we stop in Ketchikan and is is Ketchikan and uh, and we get to do no, not all the time, but we used to took fish back. So we we had to go up to Petersburg and load the fish sometimes and and. Uh, all the fish out of Ketchup Can. And we're plenty busy. And then the bastards expect you, to, you know, you do all that, and you come back, you'd like to have a day off and uh, come home, you know. No, then you wanted to, to be down there on the boat working uh, also. And I told them, uh, <coughs> God damn it. I'm not gonna do it. I says if you uh, if you wanna knock knock my pay off, for, for, that's fine and dandy. But I'm not going. To, I, I'm gonna be home. So you got an understanding there with the bastards. There's a dandy scenery picture. Yep, that's Alaska. But yeah, where do you think that is? Um, man, I, I um, yeah, there's a point where it all kind of looks the same, <laughs> and I can't tell. Boy, the bare cliffs here. And <clears throat> it looks like the entrance to a harbor. It, lo it looks like down here. There's it looks like there could be a harbor yeah. in here. Yeah. It could be between Petersburg and Juneau. Those high mountains. Hmm. Is this Devil's Thumb from a distance? No, that's not not around Petersburg. Okay. It's it's. Um, That's a high mountain there. Yep, that's right. And it's not, uh, it's not on the coast, I don't think. No. No, this definitely it looks. It might be in Saddam Straits. Yep. Must be on Chitchkoff Island. Uh, that's a uh, hmm. Breakers? Huh? <laughs> it doesn't. That doesn't Maybe look it's right. outside of ICB. Oh. The, this this is uh, white water here. Oh. I I hauled a bunch of empty barrels oh. up to Pelican. Barrels that they put liver and guts in, and they were empty. I I, I got paid uh, <laughs> maybe fifty cents a piece for. So and you had to climb every over. every every dollar counted so much in those days. So you hauled them from Seattle. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, you would take those up. Holy smokes! Yeah. But I got the gap hooks out there. So the Ketchikan merchant boats, did they look like this? Well, the Coral Sea kind of looked like that. Yeah. Yeah, the Iceland and the Coral Sea, there are sister ships. And what does it say here? I'm going to find out in a moment here. 
Northern Prince. Uh, Canadian rig. Look at how common this. That's a lot of snow. This was springtime for sure. Yeah. Dandy picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if that's five figure. No. It's just a tower there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Long slender stern here. Yeah, dandy pictures, I golly. Yeah, well, I'm glad you were taking pictures. Grandpa pulling in a fish, huh? Yep. <coughs> and yeah, so the it looks so. Is that high railing still on here then, or is this yeah, the high railing is off? This is um. Yeah, it's it's it's, it, on, it's on. all the way around. Oh boy. Made it awkward for landing fish. What I'm noticing is, in this picture, it's pretty flat calm. But with you and Grandpa on one side of the scenic, you're you're healed over. It looks like. I mean, I know that the camera yeah. angle is. It isn't me. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I was wondering if it was that biologist that fished with you. It's like, I mean, did you have to help in unloading and loading? Um, uh, no. Um, long short. Um, um, we didn't have to. I, I remember we uh, when we got out to uh, to Pelican one time. <coughs> there were all those all those people there, you know, uh, starving for money and, and, uh, I could, I could have worked, but I, I, I just was walking around town there to give a guess, give one of the locals a chance to, mm -hmm. that was, that was kind of a big thing they come in there and they could then get some money for it. A few hours of work, you know. The only income they had all winter. <laughs> wow. So I, I just went uh, walking around visiting friends there. And, but the skipper always ran the, the winches. Chatham Streets and, and Icy Streets joined there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got them sidewashes. <laughs> Came out from Huna and uh, and and uh, got uh, idiots and then they're drunk all the time too, you know. And anyway, they piled up there. And then uh, your your mother was um, was due in Juno and uh, in the morning there, and I was. <laughs> running in uh, full speed, trying to get in there in time to to meet her, and then uh, here here this happened, and the coast guard said any boat in the area, you know, and there I was, and and uh, so I had to run over there. I couldn't do anything anyway. I the crew came aboard my boat and I fed them breakfast. There was a bunch of Indians. Mm -hmm. They just come out of Huna. And then run over there and uh, and uh, run on that r reef. So, uh, gee, it was about three in the afternoon before I got into Juno, and there, there she she'd been there for hours <laughs> at that at that float plane place there, and oh crap. I, I was, uh, felt like just ignoring and the, the call, and uh, but then I had to go around point retreat, and and, and uh, then they'd see that that I was in the vicinity, you know. They could raise a fuss about that. So, but the boat righted itself, okay? When yeah, the no problem. I I uh, 
I went over there and dropped the anchor, and they 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 had gone ashore in their skiff, and and then they came over, and then I made a bunch of hotcakes for them. And hmm. Say, watch this, and that. <laughs> they were happy as hell. They were really very grateful, and I, I got coffee and hotcakes for them, you know. And then as, as soon as the tide uh, came in again, then it. It floated off, there was no problem with it. So uh, I was free to go, but Jesus is about three in the afternoon before I got to Juno. And, oh. And she'd been waiting since 10 o'clock in, yeah. in the morning there, you know. Yeah. And well, you got some good pictures. What do you think that is? Good place for a lighthouse out in the end there. It's quite a quite a setup. They always are. There's the ladder going down to the rocks here. Looks like there's steps cut in. Oh yeah. So maybe at high tide there was a way to get a boat in there. Maybe it was a Canadian thing. Well, the Canadian uh, lighthouse is sure beautiful. Yeah, I uh, I don't remember where that is. But who's the who's the kid? Well, the littlest one is me. In front of the scenic here, and then that would be my cousin Joe. Yeah, it looks like Joe. Yeah. Or Carl, I, I, one of the two. But yeah. mom, mom knows. She told me when she saw. You this think picture. that was a pelican? Well. It's got to be Juno, don't you think? Um, it's not. It can't be Pelican. No, I don't. I don't know. It might have been Juno, yeah. It would just make sense since you know Joe's there. And, it wasn't uh, Pelican. So, but I don't remember being up there. <laughs> well, you were kind of young that you be remembering. Yeah. Yes. So. I wonder what that settlement is. Well, you're sure. Must must have been Canada. No. no, look at those mud plats. Juno? Yeah, I've, I've got all those mud plats. Oh, it's just taken out of a car window. You can see in the foreground this blurry um, bushes, you know, as you're going past. Oh. So it is a snapshot out of a car window when you're so th this is the same time in Juno then dad because um, it would have been when uh, mom was there and maybe Uncle Earl was taking you out showing you some stuff fantastic picture yeah and, and this is um, uh, Keith Spencer Yeah, it looks like Cape Cross there. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. That's what it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Cape Cross. Um, we used to go behind the island. Yep. To, to get into a harbor in here. Yep. Is that a boat in there? I'm looking. Fishing By boat. golly, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, well, it's in interesting for me too, Dad. Then we went behind the island. Yep. And then there was a harbor back in here. Oh, man. Beautiful. <laughs> now you got another boat on the beach here, and the Coast Guard's there. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's the Coasting Guard, and you're, you're permitted to just run away from this one. And this boat on the beach, let's get close to it. Hmm. I can't tell. I see a setting chute on the back. Yeah. So it's a halibut boat. I mean, it doesn't look like a big halibut boat. Is it in the Narrows? Wrangle Narrows? I sure don't know. Anyway. Sure looks. No doubt it was a sidewash. That is unusual for me to see. So this would be, you know, probably around 1960 or, you know, in that area. And that looks like a, you know, what we would call a tramp steamer or something, you know, it's just a merchant boat. Yeah. 
Um, because all the time I was fishing with you, what you would see is ocean going tugs and barges. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. So, and this is obviously out to sea, so you're probably fishing the beach. Or is that mountains behind it? Yeah, she wasn't good. making much of a wake. It wasn't running at full speed, apparently. Well, you can see the propeller wash, though. Yeah, that's kicking up the water. Now, I told you that you had taken oh, pictures yeah, of the Oh, yeah, that's Opel the Opel L when I was on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Just north of Grays Harbor, they run it, run it through the through the breakers and the, up on the it's all sand flats. And they drag it across and put it in the water on the inside. <laughs> God Almighty! Uh, he uh, he was very close to going going up. Uh, to the harbor there at, at uh, Westport. And, and he turned it over to his deckhand and, and uh, the guy was supposed to wake him up when they got <laughs> a little farther along. And he woke him up after it was too late. They were already in the breakers. Uh, look at that iceberg. Gee. What is that? It's a whole bunch of icebergs, it looks like. It must be just outside of Petersburg. Something from, um, you know, up at the glacier. Gee whiz. That is a long setup there. It looks like the whole mountain range is long there. Yeah. Do you remember this guy? Is he the biologist that you had along? No, it looks like some relative of Mama was a, was a complete idiot for a deckhand. I think his name was Fred. Huh. Complete misfit. Uh, some, uh, some, uh, well, some uh, Oscar married some woman. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So kind of a relative of mom's. Yeah. Yeah, not, not by blood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fred, Fred. It would be Martha's son. Complete. Uh, and it, is it, and uh, it was Fred that Oscar was staying with when you guys had to rescue Oscar to get him back up here? Remember Oscar was with some son, stepson. Yeah. Staying with, and, well, maybe it was this guy. I don't know that. Mom, yeah. mom will know. He was supposed to take care of him, and uh, he didn't. No. Well, we won't talk about that. I look at that glacier. That's something. Yeah. So yeah, you were flying into Juno. So I, I was looking at this picture with mom, and uh, this that one? is that's that's Brita. You know. Oh yeah. But I did not know the others. Now, this looks like Joe from yeah. the dock. And then would this be, um, there was a girl that she had, uh, was a foster parent for, um, Heidi? No. Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, and then I don't know who this guy is. No, I don't either. And, um, but Mom, I think, remembered. Yeah, but that glacier would be out the Mendenhall. There yep, that's the Mendenhall Glacier. Oh yeah, that looks familiar. Yeah, that's the Mendenhall outlook. Oh yeah. It's still there. I think they've renovated it. And do you know as you're lucky to, to have that glacier out there for the tourists to see? The pelican. The gridiron. Yep, there's the steam bath.
Well, that whatever that is, that's low and wide. Um, yeah. Man, it's wonder, sure, wonder, sure, sure flat. I wonder what that's a picture of. I don't know. Um, well, now you got a crew member here cleaning some fish. Young guy. Don't know who that is. Hooded sweatshirt. And he's got a nice morning's catch there. You got some salmon and a halibut. Yeah, very small halibut. <coughs> and that island there, um, low and long. Yeah, um, hmm. Yeah, that's the deep sea here. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that, that's quite likely Middleton Island, yeah. There's something sticking out up here. Yeah. Was there a lighthouse on it? Um, yeah, that no doubt is Middleton Island. Huh. Wow. It was about four miles long. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was at Middleton many times. Anyway, it's, it's, there was a runway on it. Okay, well that would explain this, because this isn't a lighthouse. I thought it was, but when I zoomed in on it, yeah. uh, the stuff to the left, it looks like those radar domes. Yeah. And then that would make sense if you're, you're saying yeah. that there was a runway. Yeah, they, uh, they flew, uh, they flew uh, mail and supplies out from Cordoba, I think. Mm -hmm. Had, a desolate place. Yeah. There was a ship. There was a ship that uh, during the war, when everything was blacked out, you know, mm -hmm. that piled up about here. <clears throat> God, I, I, um, I had a, a marine biologist from Juno with me, and uh, he was just a. Uh, Full of life is just uh, my God, and he was so sick and tired of that sitting in that office there in Juno, and he was a marine biologist, and uh, I, I stopped in there somehow, and uh, Brita lived there, mm -hmm. and then I went up to fish and game place, and and uh, God, then we were talking a bit, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, he wanted to go with me, <laughs> he, and and he he uh, got to work there, and he he got permission to to take uh, a couple of weeks off or something. And uh, God, I came to uh, I came into Pelican. <clears throat> and uh, with my end of a trip, and and uh, and he uh, he just gotten in to to go with me, and uh, I had to go uptown for something, and and when I came back, my golly, there there his stuff was on my boat. The plane had been in and gone. And I didn't see him, but man, he had his bunk made up, and he he had all gung ho, and <laughs> and I, I was thinking of staying in overnight or whatever the hell it was. And boy, we gotta get going, he said. <laughs> so we scampered away and. And uh, then we got uh, over to Latuya Bay, and I wanted to go in there for the night. He said, heck, he said, it's only 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Got to get that gear in the water. So we ran an hour and a half more and put the gear in the water. We were about, about maybe 10 miles offshore from Cape Fairweather out there. and and. Uh, God, he was busy with that gear back in the stern there, and and then all of a sudden the boat was 
and I, God, I, I was looking at him, and, and uh, he was looking at me, and and I had the radio on, on the 2738, and I was listening to, to Conrad Clifford talking to Bill Hammer. Bill Hammer was at Middleton Island, and Conrad was just a few miles away from us. And they were talking on 2738, and, and, Con and Conrad said, uh, my God, I don't know what the heck is going on. He says, but the boat feels like it's hitting bottom. And uh, and uh, we were experiencing the same thing, you know, just like, just like the hitting a solid bottom. And, uh, and he says, uh, are, are you, are you uh, getting the same thing? Out there? No, he says, I don't feel anything. <laughs> Out of the middle of the night, and a hell of an earthquake. That was that Latuya Bay earthquake mm -hmm. you heard about. Yeah. Jim and the crickets when a thing, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, then, then uh, I think we. We. Um, went to bed and uh, in the morning we we got to hear God there there was um, the Opal Hill maybe uh, there's a guy in his Henry. shack up uh, that took the boat right over the the bar and there was trees on there too he <coughs> took the trees off first and then they dumped, dumped them in stern first outside there and then the, the boat busted up in the stern and sunk and a hell of a commotion around there and uh, we didn't know about that we'd gone to bed uh, before we found out all this stuff and <clears throat> and uh, In the morning, we, uh, it was obvious that we, there was so much junk floating around everywhere around there. We we went to town and got, got rid of our fish and got squared away. And and, uh, and uh, then we found out that Bill Hammer was really in him out there at Middleton Island. And so out there we went, but we had to go through all that trash <clears throat> until it got past uh, the the center of that thing was was around the Tuya Bay there somewhere, but but so many oh yeah that that wave um, there was a a landslide up in the Tuya Bay way up there, and it slid down the mountain and then up the other side. And when it came back down again, took all those trees all off. That's where all those trees came from. And then it went back up again, and then like this, and then then it was going out too. And, and uh, there was, um, there was a guy and his wife on the boat that uh, it took them, <laughs> There was that spit. Do you remember that spit? Mm -hmm. They were anchored here, and then it, it took the, <laughs> the wave took them up and and dumped them on the outside. The Swansons, Swansons. They had the badger. Uh, okay. And he and his wife or shack up there, and dumped them in. The, the stern opened up on the badger, and it just went down. So they they were out there floating around in a skiff and. It was flat calm, and uh, then what, was the, what was the name of that other boat there? That the Edry. Huh? The Edry. Edry, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was the guy in his small boy. Yep. What What happened there? I forget. Same thing. They they rode over, but they didn't they, sink. Huh? They rode over as well. And, and they, they got lost. The outside, but they did not sink. Huh? 
They were they floated over on the wave and they were deposited outside, but they did not sink. That's the way I remember that story. Oh. Because the Edry still it was around when I was a kid. Oh, I see. Yeah. It survived. The anchor gear didn't. And the Swansons, <laughs> it, 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 they floated right over the, <laughs> the bar and, and dumped stern first outside. And I think it sunk there. Hmm. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> and uh, the biologist and me, uh, we, we didn't know anything about that until in the morning. I, I <laughs> We we just went to bed and we felt the vibrations, you know. I I, I was looking at him and he was looking at me and the, and then uh, <laughs> Conrad Clifford was not very far from us and he was talking to Bill Hammer and he says, "I don't know what's going on now." He says, "What the boat?" He has described all the, the boat was acting just like ours was. And, and do you, do you feel anything out there where you are, Bill? No, I don't feel anything. <laughs> so we um, we decided that we'd go to town and uh, and regroup. And we weren't catching him. We were, he 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 said we had to go west. Boy, he had just been sitting in the office there in Juno and. He wanted action, boy. So we went in and got things rearranged, and, <clears throat> and then we ran out to Middleton, and and got in them. Uh, it was a good, good fishing out there. But we we sure went through a, a, a lot of floating limbs and treetops and stuff until until we got past Fairweather quite a ways so. there. Man, flat calm weather. Hmm. Well, that's some experience. Oh yeah. So well, this is really interesting. Then. Somewhere you had a picture of um, of a tree floating right side up, and I haven't been able to find it. I have your slides. Oh yeah. But uh, someday I hope to come across that. Yeah. And I'll put that with that story. It's a good picture of Sitka. It is a nice picture of Sitka, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah, really. Back before before the bridge was put in, so you had to take that ferry across. Oh, I see. Must have been. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Well, a pioneer's home is something, huh? Yep. That's right. There's a cute little double ender fishing. Let's see. Oh, a truck cabin and registered out of Seattle. Things like Edith, huh? Yeah, I think that's what it. That's what it is. Yeah. See the th there. Yeah. Uh, that was Bob Gay that had it, right? Oh wow! I didn't know wasn't that. It, wasn't it? I, I didn't. That's before my time. I he had oh, yeah. the he had the Susie Q or something or. Susie M, uh, yeah. something like that later on. So that's Bob Gay. Yeah, yeah that was built in Petersburg, uh, Nygaard. There was a guy named, uh, Ny I'm not sure if it was Nygaard now, but he lived up the Hammer Slough there and uh, he'd, he'd build the hull <coughs> and he had to, had to float. <laughs> <laughs> floated under the uh, under the road. <laughs> you know, remember where the sons of Norway was? Sure. Bridge? Yeah. Well, there was a bridge here and a bridge there, and he uh, <coughs> had to had to float float uh, float uh, just right on the tide <laughs> to get underneath there, and then underneath the other one, and then he uh, had to build the rest up uh, down to float. <coughs> Both him and his brother built small boats there, and then then he uh, he built um, a forty-eight foot um, Valentine. Oh wow! Yeah, I think it was the Valentine. 
Hmm. I think he had a different name than that, though, and then got changed. And that one he, he built uh, the pile house on the, down at the float. Yeah. I yeah. remember that guy. Completely useless. <laughs> he looks like an idiot too, doesn't he? Is this the guy from Pelican? God, I, I, I don't recall. You just remember that he wasn't a good... Yeah, this is the same guy that we saw in a picture earlier. So Jeez. we'll go past him. Huh? We'll go, we'll skip to the next one. Yeah, here he is again. Holding a fish now. Yeah. So. And there he is. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, the, the, this picture is great. This is a beautiful, beautiful day out fishing, huh? Yeah, calm. Oh, yeah, boy. And now we're going to see this fantastic picture. Oh, oh yeah. See, now, now you're in the back of your boat. Yeah, another, another useless bastard. Well, and, and this yeah. looks like you're fishing, you know, the outside grounds. Oh, yeah, I'm dragging those floats. And, um, boy, those days like that. It'd be okay if you were catching something, but it was always terrible when you weren't catching, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes <clears throat> you'd maybe get a little bit in the morning and then you had to wait just before the sun went down. So here you've got that high railing around again. It's aluminum, I'm assuming. Yeah. And, and it must have been complicated to just, you couldn't just slide it on and off, you know? Were there, were there pipes that it would uh, fit into, or, or was it bolted down to the uh, to the top of the railing there? Well, there was a little uh, little thing built out here, huh? And that was uh, apparently bolted to the to the solid wood lagged or something down. And it wasn't aluminum in the, those days, I don't think. Might have been steel? Galvanized yeah. steel. Uh, yeah, it's really tough to find a comfortable spot, but, you know, yeah, sit, sitting in the cockpit like that, you couldn't have sat like that if it hadn't been for that little railing there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, look it's, how common it was. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, when I was a little kid, I, I would assume you did this before I was born, but when I was with you, you know, this was something you would call the Jello day because we would make Jello on days like that. Oh, and I look, I would get excited about that when I was <laughs> nine, ten years old because, you know, boy, Jello. Yeah. And, and if you made Jello on a little bit rollier day, then you, the uh, the bowl of Jello looked. Uh, it would have a dip in the middle of it, you know, because it was rocking until it yeah. solidified. Um, so that's pretty cute. 